kids, we're going to have another journey. And uh, hi to the young men or women connected to Discord or Discord, I don't know how you call it. Discord or Discord, I would say with Discord. Discord, okay. So we're going to continue our journey in the wonderful book of First Timothy. It's very exciting to go to the Word of God because the Word of God is life. The Word of God is truth. The Word of God is the path to know God, the secret to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no way you can know the Lord Jesus Christ without knowing the Word of God. So today, or tonight rather, let's continue with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. I advise you to go back and listen many times what we saw, the studies we, we had on 1 Timothy chapter 1 and chapter 2. By the way, these studies are verse by verse, verse by verse. So it is an in-depth, in-depth study of the scriptures. As the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth, truth shall set you how? Free, free, correct, free. There is no way you can be set free without knowing the truth. So by the grace of God, we're going to continue tonight with 1 Timothy chapter 3. But before we begin with verse 1, why we in turn don't you go ahead with the word of prayer before we start? Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have been doing for us. Thank you for the protection and the peace that you have administered unto us throughout this day and for everything um, you have done. I want to thank you once again as we come here in your name to learn of your word and to learn your ways and to uh, apprehend a new revelation in these scriptures. Thank you in advance for all the new principles that we are going to um, learn tonight and that we are going to apply to our lives. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that I prayed. Amen. 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 So, without further ado, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. I want you to observe this sentence. This is a true saying, meaning this is true, very true, highly true, deeply true. It couldn't be truer. This is very true. This is a true saying because, by the way, the word of God is truth. The only place we can have truth in this world is not in truth social. <laughs> the only way we can have the real truth is in the word of God. So, this is a true saying. If a man desire, if a man desire the office of a bishop, by the way, I'm reading King James, King James Version. You may have uh, other version, other versions. So again, verse one, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. The best thing somebody can desire on this world, uh, in this world is to desire the office of a bishop. When the Bible says bishop, 
Bishop is a very simple, humble function, meaning you are a slave for the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. Nowadays, the word bishop equates glory, equates fame, equates being in high regard in the society. You even have archbishops, quadribishops, quintibishops, tentibishops, all the titles they're given to themselves, to themselves, sorry. The, the term bishop is a term of service. A bishop is a servant, I would even say a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ, a slave, a bishop. So forget about what you see in so-called churches. Forget about what theology teaches. The term bishop comes from the Greek word episkopes, meaning somebody looking over the disciple of Jesus Christ, an overseer. A bishop is an overseer, is somebody who is overseeing the disciples of Jesus Christ in a church. So a bishop, so to be a bishop, a bishop can be a pastor, a bishop can be a, an evangelist, a bishop can be a, a deacon, even a deacon can be a bishop. So forget about what you see. Bishop so and also those people who are uh, uh, having the worldly glory, the worldly fame. But bishop is a term of service. Bishop is a term of slavery. But a slavery not to the world, but slavery to God, to Jesus Christ. So I want you to understand that. Nothing to, to, to do, uh, to see, uh, to, uh, not, nothing. Uh, in relation to what we, we see in uh, congregations, in denominations. A true bishop of Jesus Christ is a servant, a humble man, not, having, not usurping, usurping the glory of Jesus Christ, but living in humbleness, humility, in modesty, not living as a king, not robbing people, not living as a prince, as a, a, a VIP, a celebrity, but a bishop is a servant. Those are the foundation of sound Christian doctrine. Those are the foundations. A true Christian must follow the path Jesus Christ showed to us. So a bishop, according to the Bible, not according to theology, not according to churchianity, because churchianity is not Christianity. Churchianity is people inventing their Christianity according to their culture, according to their, their inventions, their ingeniosity, ingeniosity. But a true bishop, according to the word of God, is a servant, is a slave. Let me rephrase it is a slave, living in modesty, living in humility, being sober. And we're going to see the characteristic of a bishop. And you will never see in the Bible that a bishop has to come out of a seminary, out of a biblical college. You will never see that in the Word of God. And I advise you, all of you, to read that wonderful book written by a, I, by the way, it is a history book, how paganism, paganism infiltrated the Church of Jesus Christ, starting from, I think, the fourth, the fourth century. You don't become a bishop by getting into the seminary. You don't become a bishop 
by attending a biblical college and having a master or a PhD in divinity science. <laughs> What a blasphemy when they, they talk about divinity science. In fact, in theology seminars or in seminaries or in a biblical college, be it Baptist, Lutheran or so forth, they teach you humanism. They teach you sociology, philosophy, anthropology, and all the logies in the world. That's why they teach you. So here, I'm very glad we're going to see the foundation of being a servant. If you don't respond to those qualifications we're about to enumerate, we are about to go after, you do not qualify to become a bishop. And again, please, Forget about bishops in the world with their worldly apparels. They have robes, fancy robes, adorned with gold, with shiny uh, garments. No. Jesus Christ was a simple man dress, dressing like everybody. He didn't, he didn't preach in front of a pulpit. He doesn't preach in front, of, in front of an altar. Do you remember what happened? I'm addressing uh, people who read their Bible. Do you remember the night Jesus Christ was arrested? The people who were sent to, to arrest Jesus Christ couldn't distinguish him from his disciples. Nowadays, if a police, if police go inside a church to arrest a bishop, a bishop they're going to distinguish him for, from afar off. The way he dresses, his high throne, his high chair, his clothes. But the night Jesus Christ was arrested, Judah, had to kiss him for the, the, the arrestor, the arrestors to, to, to recognize him. Judah, who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, had to kiss him so that people coming to arrest Jesus Christ could recognize him. So he was a humble man, dressed like everybody. Nowadays, bishops, when you enter in a so-called church, In so-called churches, there are nothing but houses of demons, habitation of demons, houses of prostitution with all kinds of music, godly music, people dancing Beyonce in churches, dancing the uh, Rihanna music in churches. Incredible. And I had to denounce those things a few years ago where uh, in, a black, in a black church in Dallas, uh, You see people are uh, playing Michael Jackson music, playing Rihanna, Beyonce. And the pastor is leading the congregation to dance. Those are not churches. Those are nightclubs. Those are houses of uh, 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 entertainment. A true church of Jesus Christ is where We have the utmost godliness, the fear of God, the hatred, the hatred of sin. That's the true church. And by the way, the church of Christ Jesus is not physical. The church is not a building. Wherever you have two or three people gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, that is a church. As right now, we have a church. A church begins with how many people? A thousand? Two thousand? Two hundred? No. The Lord Jesus Christ said, wherever, wherever two or three people are gathered in my name, I'm there. Right, like right now. No matter where you 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 from, no matter in what, what town you listen to that teaching right now, we are the church. Kids, young men, 
Young ladies, I want you to understand that this is the foundation of true Christianity. And my prayer is that in this generation in America and all over the world, we have young men, young ladies understanding this truth. People have been led, uh, have been led astray, have been led astray. They're going to perdition, the way of perdition, the way of hell, with false churches, with false doctors, false preachers. And if you don't cling yourself to your Bible, you're going to be led astray. The secret, the secret to, to escape deception. And by the way, we are living great times of deceptions. Deception, deception, sorry. So if you're not careful enough, if you're not prudent enough to clean yourself to the Bible, you're going to be subject to great deception. And those are the prophecies that were prophesied by disciples of Jesus Christ, even Jesus Christ himself in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, Jesus Christ was saying, many false Christs will rise. Many false Jesuses will, uh, shall rise. They will rise. False Christs, false Jesuses, false pastors, false bishops. They will deceive a lot of people. Like the video you just uh, published, Winton. The video you just published. How they can introduce the NFL in the church. And by the way, this is not a church. This is a habitation of demons. This is a house of whoredom, of, of prostitution. This is not a church. We should understand that. I'm not the one who, I'm not the one who, who wrote the Bible. I did not write the Bible. The Bible comes from God. The Bible comes from the Lord of the, 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 the mouth of God, figuratively. I'm not the one, so don't kill the, me the messenger. I'm only the messenger. I'm only taking you back to the foundation, the cornerstone Jesus Christ showed us more than 2,000 years ago. The word of God does not change. We cannot adapt the word of God to our cultures, to our generation. The word of God is the same thousands of years ago, today, and what? Forever. So let's go back to this wonderful book after this long digression. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, let's read again verse 1. This is a true saying. I like the way that verse begins. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. People nowadays, mostly young men and young uh, women like yourself, they desire, they aspire to be great businessmen, great businesswomen, women, great politicians, great stars, stars, superstars in the NBA, in Hollywood. Great stars of uh, great entertainers, they aspire to do things. But when you tell your friend, I'm aspiring to be a, a servant of Jesus Christ, <laughs> they, they, they start laughing. They start saying, hey, man, hey, dude, I think you, you're losing your, mi your mind. You're not losing your mind because the word of God says what? If somebody desires to be a bishop, meaning a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, he desires what? He desires a good work. A good work. You can have your, your profession. You can, have, you can be a, a, a doctor, a teacher, whatever, because a man of God should also have his secular work. You can have your business, you can, whatever. You can be a teacher, a, a, a nurse, a, a firefighter, uh, but 
If you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to learn the principle. All right, let's go to verse 2. A bishop must underline the word must is a commandment. The Bible doesn't say a bishop should. No, it's not should. It must. A bishop must be how? Blameless. Blameless. If you open your mouth, you go to YouTube to post a video, you're preaching the word of God, or you have you are an overseer in a church, you need to be blameless. I remember saying to uh, Brendan, uh, who uh, uh, nicely won, won, wanted to offer his services, and that's great. I'm very happy to see young men offering their services to serve the Lord. But the first thing you should bear in mind before serving the Lord is to be blameless. You have to be blameless. No longer go to internet to watch porn, pornography, or to masturbate yourself, or to watch filthy things, or to listen to filthy songs. No, you have to be blameless. There is no age to serve the Lord. There is no age to serve, to become a, a bishop. You can become a bishop even at 16, 17, 18, 20, no matter the age. But the first condition, what is the first condition we read in verse 2? A bishop must bear in mind that it's not should. It's not a suggestion. If it were should, we would have said, we would have, we would have said, sorry, we would have said, God is advising. God is not suggesting. A bishop must be how blameless, meaning without fault. Can we be tempted from time to time? Yes, of course, we can be tempted. If somebody says I'm not tempted, I'm going to say he's a li you liar. You may even fall, but if you fall, Get back on your two feet and continue your walk. If you're tempted, pray God to overcome temptation. To serve God, the first condition is to be blameless, to overcome sins. To overcome, we, we should be overcomers. Mostly you as young men and young, lady, young ladies, you should be Overcomers, overcome sins. You must experience victory over sins. Addiction to drugs, methamphetamine, heroin, uh, marijuana. You should be delivered from the, those things. Your eyes should be pure. You don't go to, in, to the internet, you don't open the computer when your parents are not there or are sleeping in 3 o'clock in the morning to uh, hook up with prostitutes. And you cannot serve God if, if you're, living in a, you're living a filthy a filthy lifestyle. I can, spend, I can spend hours and hours trying to explain what it takes to serve the Lord by being blameless. You see, the first criteria is blameless. That's the, the, when you want to serve the Lord, number one, be blameless. Not lying anymore. Lying to the parents, lying to your friends, lying to your teachers, lying to your, your supervisor at work, lying to your boss, committing fraud, cheating on your taxes when you, fi you file your your. IRS taxes, income taxes at the end of the year. You don't declare all your incomes. You lie. You teach. Uh, you sorry, sorry. You 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 cheat. You lie. You 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 defraud. You commit fraud. You uh, defile your body with filthy images. We should be blameless. Our computers, our phone, should be devoid of any filthiness. 
porn, nasty music, music that doesn't glorify God, comedy, entertainment. God is godly, God is, sorry, God is holy. God is infinitely, infinitely holy. That's why God expects us of us to be how? Holy. So the first condition, the first criteria, I don't see, I don't know if we say criterion or criteria. The first, let's let go, let's be, let me go with the uh, the criteria. The first criteria, the first criteria, the first criteria is to be blameless. Blameless. Husband and how many wives? Husband of two, two, two wives, right? No. Husband of one wife. Coming from Africa, over there people can have four, five, ten wives. I don't even understand why you can have more than, even taking care of one wife is, is very demanding. So you have to be a, a deranged somehow to, to seek after many women and having mistresses. One wife. Polygamy, meaning being married, being married to more than one wife. This is sin. You should have only one wife if you want to serve God. If you want to serve God. Not two wives. Only one. That's the, we, so I wanted to underline those criterion or criteria to be a, a bishop. So first, blameless. Second, the husband of one wife. One wife. And young kids, the ideal should be your first, your husband should be the first person you met. You, 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 you met. The first person you met is your, uh, your young, young lady, young woman, woman. The first, your first, your, the only man you should have in your life is the first you met. No more than that. That's why we should, we should, that's why we had, we, we, we must teach to young people. Sexual immorality is the number one plague in the world among young people. Go to uh, uh, TikTok. Everything you see of TikTok, 70 to 99% is what? Sexual immorality. Perversion. People shaking their private part, uh, parts. Sexual immorality. So a bishop or a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ must be husband of one wife. Young men. Young ladies. There is no daring. There is no daring with when you are in Christ Jesus. The first person, because living in a, a world, you have to, uh, you can have uh, many, uh, uh, many girlfriends, many boyfriends, you are uh, intimately, intimately related to, no. For us Christians, our body should be pure. Young men, listen to me. The only wife, the only woman you're going to know in an intimate way, intimate way, is your wife. Like the young Isaac. Isaac did not sleep around in his village or in his neighborhood. Isaac was his father, Abraham, serving him, taking care of the cattle, until God sent miraculously Rebecca. 
That's the that's God's plan today. So stop sexual immorality, having boyfriends, having girlfriends, and you see in churches right nowadays. So sexual immorality is even promoted, is even encouraged. That shouldn't be so. I may sound uh, harsh, but let me tell you something. Hellfire is go it's going to be billions of times harsher. My harshness right now is out of love to help you escape hellfire that will be burning eternally without ceasing. People will suffer, suffer, suffer forever and ever and ever and ever. Hell is not a, a joke. Hell is not a fable. It's not a, an illusion. Hellfire is real. Sinners will end up in hellfire. That's why we preach deliverance from sin. Deliverance from sin. So we see in verse 3, a bishop, rather, excuse me, rather verse 2, bishop then must be one blameless to the husband of one wife, vigilant, vigilant. Let's analyze for a, a moment the word vigilant. Vigilant means you have discernment. Discernment. Like a few moments ago, I was vigilant. I, asked, I uh, saw the, uh, the, the Concord, the new Concord account winter uh, uh, set up, and I saw a shield with a cross. And exerting vigilance, I told Winton, do you know that the symbol of a shield And a cross is a symbol for, from Illuminati or the, temp, the Knight Templar, Templar. Many people don't know that. So as young people engaging in the way of Jesus Christ, pray God to give you discernment. One big manifestation of being vigilant is to have discernment, to discern. A bishop or a, a servant of God who lacks discernment or vigilance is nothing but what? A blind person, a blind person. Without vigilance, you are nothing but a blind person. So vigilant and sober. Another word, sober. How many drunk people we see in churches nowadays? Nowadays. Drunkenness. One of the one of the most prosperous business businesses nowadays are nightclubs, bars, where they serve alcohols, all, all types of alcohols, liquors, they call spirits. By the way, I like the word spirit because when you indulge yourself in alcohol, in fact, you are flirting with uh, spirits. Another word for alcohol or liquor is spirit. And I, I don't know who came up with that word, but that's the real word for alcohol, spirit. I remember somebody testifying how he got deliv delivered from this uh, uh, a demon of uh, Uh, drunkenness, uh, the uh, the demon getting out of him were whistling like a snake. Yeah, spirit. No, when somebody uh, indulges himself in alcohol, the same with drugs, methamphetamine, heroin, marijuana, and so forth. The same thing. Sober. You see a lot of so-called pastors using drugs, sniffing white powder, Injecting, there's a lot of pastors because they deal with uh, uh, depression and 
The cure for depression is not injecting yourself with a needle, needle filled with a, a heroin or whatever drug. Jesus Christ is the, solu the solution for uh, depression or uh, uh, suicidal impulses, impulses. So sober, sober. Even your, your body should manifest sobriety, sobriety. But you see young people, all over their body have a lot of tattoos, a lot of piercing, piercing on the tongue, piercing on ears, piercing on lips, piercing on the belly button. They're exhibiting with a, 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 a tiny t-shirt showing their belly button with a, a, a ring. To all over the body. As Christians, listen to me, young, young men, young, young, young ladies. As Christians, we should be set apart. You cannot be, you cannot purport, pretend to be a Christian, but at the same time, living like the world, dressing like the world, listening to music, the, the world listen to listens to. We should be a generation apart. We should live in godliness and the fear of the Lord. Sobriety. People having a body filled with tattoo is not sobriety. We, we did those things by ignorance. Somebody called me from uh, Portugal in Europe. I think France or Portugal, he said, I became a Christian But I tattooed, I tattooed on my fore, on my uh, uh, forearm, the symbol of the devil, which is the dragon. So I don't know what to, how to get rid of it. I say, my brother in Christ, you should do everything to get get rid of this tattoo, even though you have to cut your hand, because you cannot live with the symbol. You're a Christian now, but when you were tormented by the passions. The foolish passions of the of the youth, you were tormented by, by those passions. You tattooed a dragon on your arm. And now he discovered that a dragon is the symbol of the devil. So how come a Christian can read the Bible and when, when looking at his arm, he, see, he sees what? A dragon. But the good news is, and that is testimony, he look around, he looked around, he researches a lot of uh, clinics, a lot of doctors. Uh, many doctors told, uh, told, uh, told him yeah, they couldn't uh, deal with uh, uh, this, uh, the, uh, with uh, removing, removing the tattoo. And by the grace of God, he finally find, he found somebody who is willing to, uh, to remove it but it's going to go through many operations, surgical operations, to, to remove the, 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 dragon, the dragon. You see how foolish we can be when we, we're young? And that's why I'm happy when I see young men, young women like yourself, knowing the Lord before doing foolish things. I myself, oh, God in my witness, I did many foolish things in my youth. I regret I did many, 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 many. The only thing I did not do, I wasn't a homosexual. But I did everything. I smoked. I was a drunk going to nightclubs, doing those things. Please, my kids, young men, young women, do not follow my path. It's good that you are discovering the Lord Jesus Christ this early. This early. Most of us, most of us, all the Christians, we have been living with remorse. Of course, God forgave us. Of course, we are new Christians. But we are new creatures. We are new Christians. But when you look back, you think at what you did. It makes, it, it makes you look very, very sad. Let's go back to the verse. 
don't forget we're going through uh, Timothy. So the first cri uh, criteria, characteristic of a bishop, blameless, one, two, husband of one wife, not many wives, but one wife, vigilant, meaning having discernment, and sober. That's why you open a big, a big parenthesis, a big, a big dig we, we, made, we made a digression, a big digression, sober, of good behavior, good behavior. The way you behave vis-a-vis -vis your parents, the way you behave vis-a-vis -vis your siblings, vis-a-vis -vis your neighbor, neighbors in your neighborhood, vis-a-vis -vis your classmates in college, in high school, vis-a-vis -vis your, your, your co-workers, co your colleagues at work. Good behavior. Not somebody uh, uh, content, contentious, always quarreling, always uh, enraged, always insulting. No, we should have good behavior as disciples of Jesus Christ. And everything I'm teaching right now, they don't teach that in so-called churches. Contrary-wise, contrary -wise, they promote perversion. Immorality. So after good behavior, another criteria is given to hospitality. The book of James gives us a, revel a big revelation. People who are given to hospitality, meaning being able to welcome strangers, welcome strangers, they can host Angels from heaven, from God, without even knowing. So we have to be a good Christian, a good bishop should be given to hospitality. Your house should be open to everybody. You see a stranger who is suffering under the sun, you can offer him hospitality, food, time to rest before continuing, continuing his journey. Verse 3, not given to wine, not given. Given to wine means addicted to wine. That's another word for given to wine, means addicted. Addicted, not strifer. Yeah, strifer is a, a, a quarreler, quarreling, quarreling. Not strifer, not greedy of what? Filthy lucre. One of the biggest cancers, cancers in Christianity, in Christendom nowadays, is prosperity gospel of Benny Hinn, T.D. Jacks, uh, Paula White, Joyce Mayer, what else? All over the world. The gospel of prosperity, people become... People become preachers because of money. What do we see here? You do not become a preacher because you are greedy of filthy lucre. If you are greedy, if you're looking after money, go do something else. Go to something else. Become a worldly influencer. Become an entrepreneur. Become a, 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 whatever you want to do. But you do not become a preacher, you become rich. If you become rich, go uh, try gambling in Las Vegas. And uh, trust me, you won't become, become rich uh, gam going to, uh, uh, in, a, in a gambling spree, a spree in Las Vegas. Do whatever you want to do if you want to be rich, but do not think one second you're going to use the Lord Jesus Christ to build a big, a big church, a big community to become rich. No. You serve the Lord because you want to help people, help people go to heaven. So no greedy. See, cupidity, greediness, greedy of filthy look. I like that expression. I want you to underline. I, please underline this word, uh, this expression. Filthy look is a look. Look at me in, Financial gain, financial gain, but that financial gain is filthy. 
but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Another word is covetousness. We live in a generation where we are very, very covetous. Those, all those influencers, they exhibit their wealth, their money during their broadcast, their podcast. They say, hey, I be, here is what I become. I became rich doing YouTube videos. Here is what I become rich doing so and so. So do, do the same. I can teach you how to become rich. This is covetousness. Covetous. Verse 4. And this is a verse addressing those are bishops and they have a family. They married. They have a family. One that rules well his own house. This is not a criteria. You have to rule well your own house before becoming a bishop, meaning a servant of God. Do not forget, kids, young men, young ladies, that a bishop is a humble, modest servant of Jesus Christ. So another criteria, criteria in verse 4 is, one that rules well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Not children being disobedient, disobedient, but subjection, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Let's move on to verse 5. And this is a good question. And this is an affirmative, affirmative question. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? That's true. Take care of your house first, and then you can take care of the house of God. There is an important warning in verse 6. Not a novice, because when you suddenly became a Christian, you have to be very, very careful. Novice means a new convert, a new convert. Let's be lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because when you, you newly, you newly converted to Christ, take time to learn, take time to study the Bible, take time to go through the Bible, before becoming a bishop. You can share your testimony. You can expose the works of the darkness, but be careful. This is an admonition. This is a big warning. Trust me. I saw many people who went astray, who went astray. They were converted. They were zealous at the beginning, having a burning fire to serve. But guess what? What happened? Because they were novice. Novice mean, means new convert, new, new, newly, newly converted. Their, their, their heart got rap, rapidly inflamed by pride lack of humility. So be careful. We're not preaching Christ to become famous. We're not preaching Christ to show that we, we are somebody. When you preach Christ, you are nobody. Christ you're preaching is everything. Bear that in mind. Those are good lessons before you engage in the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer is to have young men rising up and serving the Lord. But this is a warning. Do not do it for fame, for money. Do not do it for vain glory. Do not do it to become uh, famous, to become a celebrity, to become an influencer. No, do it because you have the love for lost souls. You want 
those lost soul, those those lost souls to know the Lord, to know the Bible. So not a novice. That's why I'm very adamant about preventing novices to become to become servants of the Lord Jesus Christ or preachers. I'm very adamant, not a novice, because pride is not far. Bragging, pr- pride, boastfulness are not far. Verse 7, moreover, he must have a good report to become a servant of God, a, bi- a bishop, you must have a good report of them which are without, without, of them which are without, meaning non, non, non-believers, non-Christians, lest he fall into reproach and the snare, the snare of the devil. Careful. We should be of good reproach. We should have a good report for people who are not Christians, our neighbors, our classmates, classmates, our colleagues, members of our families that are not Christians, our siblings that are not Christians. We should have a good report of them or from them. Verse, verse eight, verse eight, likewise, Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not, not double-tongued. A deacon is also a servant, but servant in, serving in a, a ministerial uh, things in the church, like helping with setups or organizing stuff in the church. That's the, the, mean, that's the meaning of a deacon. But even a deacon, let's listen, let's, let's read again from uh, the beginning, verse 8. Verse 8, like, likewise, must the deacons be grave, meaning serious in whatever they do, grave, not double-tongued. On the line, the word double-tongued, duplicity, lying, being hypocrite, double-tongued. Do you know the creature that is double-tongued? A snake. So if you're double-tongued in the eyes of God, you are nothing but what? A viper, a rattlesnake. Not double-tongued, not not double-tongued, sorry, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, again, much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. Again, for the second time, we see that a, a person serving God must not be greedy or filthy. Look, verse 9, holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. So we, have, we that's why we should do, have a pure con- conscience in front of God. Verse 10, and let these also first be proved. Yeah. A servant of God must be proved in the church. So before you engage in whatever endeavor, for Jesus Christ, you need, be, you need to be proved, mean tested, proved. Even in the world, in uh, uh, secular, secular functions, in secular functions. When somebody was, uh, is a new graduate from the police academy, he has to be tested. Even before graduation, before he graduates and uh, go out there to... Uh, uh, to function as a police officer, a police officer, he has to be tested. That's the same thing. So, verse ten again, verse ten, and let these also be first proved. Then let him use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Again, we see the word blameless. We started with the first criteria to be a bishop, blameless. So. For a man to engage in the ministry, he should be tested, proved, blameless. Verse 11, even so, must their wives be grave, 
not slanderers. Slanderers, meaning defaming people. Murmuring. But sober, faithful in all things. Verse 12, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Again, one wife. It's not by coincidence that God is emphasizing in this commandment. God is holy. As such, he expects of his servants to be holy as he is holy himself. Verse 12, let the deacon be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own wife, their own house as well. Verse 13, verse 13, for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and good boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 14, these things write I unto thee. See, Paul is writing to a young man, a young, bold servant of Christ Jesus named uh, Timothy. So in verse 14, Paul is saying this, these things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. Verse 15, but if I carry long, that you may know how you ought, you ought to behave thyself or yourself, to put it simply, because I'm reading the, the old English in uh, uh, 1600, the 1600th uh, century uh, King James uh, version of the Bible. Again, verse 15, verse 15, but if I carry long, that you may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Let's end this teaching with verse 16. And without controversy, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Again, the word godliness should be the lifestyle we, we aspire to. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up into glory. Let's give, let's give thanks to God, thanks to God for these uh, revelations, for these words of uh, encouragement, exhortation. Oh, Father, our dear Father, the one God, the only one God, the Almighty God, thank you for the unspeakable blessing to know thy truth, to be set, to be set free by that truth. Thank you, Father, for each and everyone who listened to this teaching and other people who will be listening to this teaching if, if it is published. Thank you for leading us to the path of godliness. Thank you for granting us the great gift of repentance so that we can become new persons delivered from sin. sin. Father, as we are uh, getting ready to go, to go to bed, to have some rest in the flesh, we implore our grace we implore our, your we, you imp, we implore our, your grace. We implore your uh, uh, protection. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, surround our houses, our beds with your hedge of protections. 
Thank you very much again for these revelations, for this uh, wonderful world. Thank you for everything. It is in the wonderful, magnificent name of our Lord Jesus Christ that I've prayed. Amen. Amen.